The thing about it is, is that, and I think the thing that rivers, especially guys that don't like, haven't been doing this for very long or they don't travel, like a lot of uh, roofing companies will travel. And I'm not saying that that's a bad thing at all because a lot of times they, the hailstorm may hit a, a town that doesn't have any roofers, right? And so, you know, they're in Kearney, Nebraska, and the closest roofing company is in Omaha, you know, as an example. Um, if the town's big enough, it's going to draw business. They're going to bring professional crews. They're going to bring, you know, they're going to have bring their relationships with their material suppliers. Um, and they're going to bring it into this town and they're going to get those, those houses re-roofed. So I'm, in no way would I ever use storm chaser as a pejorative. I was a storm chaser. I did basically the same thing, you know, following money around the country, right? Um, those guys, um, I've seen a lot of real hail damage, right? Um, some local guys, depending on where, what part of the country you're in, probably seen a lot of real hail damage. So they know what it looks like, right? Um, they didn't, maybe don't want to waste their time you know, battling it out in, with supplements and arbitration and appraisal and all this garbage that some companies really f somehow find lucrative. Um, but other guys may not really understand or think it through that, you know, a, a storm, a storm adjust, a cat adjusters, um, generally one of the main things that we always do is hail damage, right? Wind and hail. And so we've seen a lot of it, right? So you get, you start to get like this sort of muscle memory um, in your mind about what storm damage looks like, what it is and what it isn't, what an old roof looks like versus a new one. All the, you start to learn all the materials. It takes, and it takes, you know, time to learn all that stuff and to build up that experience. Um, I read an interesting story about um, a beautiful, perfect, um, Michelangelo sculpture that was recovered from, or supposedly recovered from some temple and ended up out on the, the art market somehow, or, or like that the, they were trying to sell it to museums is what is what it was. And it was perfect. Like it was the, the style and everything were just like exactly like Michelangelo. And they were, you know, it was, the, they were wanting hundreds of millions of dollars for it or whatever it was. And, um, a experience, a very, very, very experienced um, historian and sort of like who like specialized only in like Michelangelo and like marble sculpture, took a look at it and instantly said, that's a fake. And then, oh, how do you, how can you tell? He's like, I don't know. I can just, there's just, it's something's off about it, right? That's how you get to be as when you're, when you're doing this kind of thing, you look at stuff, you're not often going to see hail, hammer hail. It's frauds, not very common, um, thankfully, right? Um, the the thumb thing, that's super annoying, and that's something that's like, it's hard to get away from that because the guys are going to go up on the roof when you're not there, and they're going to be like, well, shoot, look at this. You know, and they, they make it their own little test square, right? Usually, they're not going to do the entire slope that way, so you go off and find your own little clear spot where they, you're pretty sure that they haven't been. You make your own test square, right? And then you go... It, hey, it could be totaled, right? It could be, it could be legit. The guy could know what he's totally know what he's doing. Um, but you're going to, you're going to gain experience with this, especially you guys that are in Colorado Springs and, and doing these, these big, big, the big Denver storm and all that stuff. It doesn't take a lot. You start to see it and you start to like, you get the feel of it when you see that hail damage and you're looking at it and you touch it, right? you start to know what it is and then you start to know what it isn't. Okay. Um, and the, the hardest part, I'll say this, the hardest part about doing wind and hail, hail damage claims is when it's lightly hit. It's kind of in a borderline area and you're like, well, I mean, looking at the spattering and it's like, there's a couple of bigger ones and, but it's mostly little small things and you get up on the roof and there's like a, maybe a couple, and you could spend, you could spend an hour doing test squares, trying to find stuff. Cause you found like one hit, right? There's one, right? And it may be that the, the, the skirt edge of that storm flung out a few random big ones and they fell and wanted to pop this front slope right in the middle of the front slope on this guy's house. And that was it. Right. 
I mean, how many times have you been in a hailstorm where it's like a bunch of little stuff and then like a couple of few big ones and then the storm's over, right? That happens all the time. One ding in the gutter, one impact. Good. It's like legit. Learn how to become an independent property claims adjuster with my free online course at adjustertv.com slash start. Go there. You're like, this is a, that's for sure, Haley. You can't find a single other one. You start questioning yourself, right? You're like, well, was that really a one? Am I just missing the rest of them? Maybe I should like, you know, with that one, can I like, you know, these other borderline ones, if you got one and you don't find anything else and there's not really any other spattering, there's no soft metal damage, it's probably not. Even if it's soft, right? It might be from something else. Somebody might've hit a golf ball over and it hit the roof and made it to do the same thing, right? From a lofted, like, you know, maybe like a seven iron shot or something like that. That's got some distance and speed velocity behind it. Not just like a putter, you know, your pitching wedge. Anyway, um, that's probably the hardest part of this whole thing and getting up on a roof with a guy and he finds that spot and then he tries to argue all this other stuff that's bird poop and just stuff that you, you know, you're like, ah, this is just not, I just can't, you're not feeling it, right? You're like, just something's not quite, you can't just justify totaling out that whole roof. Um, then you just have to make the call, right? What do you do in that situation? Well, you just, it may be, you're like, I know that that's a hail hit. I can't find any more. There's no way I'm getting to seven. There's absolutely no way I'm getting to seven on any of these slopes. You know, I, you might go down to the homeowner and say, Hey, listen, you know, and I don't think you're supposed to do this. I did it a few times. Um, so if somebody from an insurance company sees this, you may be calm. It's years ago. You wouldn't know them. Uh, maybe comment if this was the wrong thing to do. But I would say, hey, listen, into the homeowner, if, especially if the contractor was cool. He's like, man, I'm not really. I mean, if if, you, if you're in that situation where the guy's like, I, I mean, this is, I don't think there's anything wrong with this roof. Then, then there's nothing wrong with it, right? You're getting off the roof. The homeowner, your roof is fine. We're leaving. But if there's a little bit there, you know, even if you wrote a uh, an estimate and it, and it ended up being like a, you know, just a minimum charge to do the repair. Um, you know, I think you're supposed to document that and finish the claim out however you found it. But in certain circumstances, you might say to the homeowner, and this is the thing that, you know, I might have gotten in trouble for uh, or not, say, hey, listen, you know, there's like, there's one, maybe two little hail spots on your whole roof. Um, there's a couple of dings on the gutter on the back side of the house and that's about it. I think the main part of this storm hit about a half a mile to the east of you guys. And every roof I look at, I mean, they're just, it looks like they're machine gun, right? Your roof looks pretty good overall. There's just a couple of spots. You know, if you guys, and usually they'll say, oh, well, we don't wanna file a claim anyway, right? But you might say, or I said, maybe you don't do this. I might say, you know, it's, I don't know if it's worth it for you guys to file a claim. You know, if you don't want to, just tell me and I'll just close this and say we didn't find any damage or, you know, whatever, the roof was fine or, or you guys wanted to withdraw. Um, yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, I, I don't think I, in the, the few times that I did that, I don't think anybody ever was like argued or really wanted me to file a claim. And But I would always say, you know, I looked over there for your roof with a fine tooth comb and I, and I, I don't want to make the wrong call on it. But, you know, I'm a human being, not perfect. If you get another guy, a contractor out here in a few weeks, you know, maybe let, let a, a, a winner hit it, something like that, right? Um, have him come back and take a look, take a look at it. And, and it could be that, you know, you have a, a little bit better of a quality shingle um, that was a little bit harder to damage or, you know, the granules, the, the hail damage is there, but it wasn't as obvious until it was weathered a little bit. That's possible, right? And I've seen that, totally seen that. Um, you know, maybe just wait till then. We'll close it for now, and uh, you know, just call us back if they if they if you get a guy out here in April or March or whatever next next spring. Um, you know, he finds something, just call us back, and we'll we'll take another look at it. Oh, okay, great, that's fine. As long as they know they got you know they're getting a fair shake, and you're not just like saying no because you, you know, just say no because you're an insurance company, whatever. That was it? Had the chance to ride along with the adjuster and got on forty roofs the past couple of weeks. Exactly what happened. Yeah, con they, well, it, this is exactly what happened. We encountered several roofers who don't seem to know their hail damage. And in fairness, okay, and this is why you guys got to keep an open mind about this and, and not 
take anything personally ever leave the egos at home right or at least in the truck um i sold roofs for about three months and it was a totally eye-opening experience i met with a, a vast uh, array of different insurance company adjusters a lot of independents a lot of people a lot of companies i never heard of like teachers union home i didn't know that teachers union had homeowners insurance which is crazy they got an adjuster out there right all these different adjusters all ages all genders all everything's right and all gave me totally different and i i had been an adjuster for 16 years doing cat work doing hail primarily right so i knew that's why I thought I was going to be good at doing, I was terrible at it, um, doing roof sales. I knew what hail damage was and what it wasn't, right? And adjusters, um, is, the adjusters were just as ignorant and rude and as, you know, as, as any roofing contractor I've ever met. Maybe even more so because I, I think that they felt like it was, everything was going to be a confrontation all the time and that we were... You know, I was going to fight him on everything and be pointing at bird poop or whatever. And, you know, so they, they, they came out of the gate, they jumped out of their truck or whatever with their dukes up. They were ready to, let's, you know, tumble. Um, so in fairness to those, fairness to the roofing guys, they're getting, a, a, they're getting a bunch of different adjusters, right? They're getting adjusters that are saying no to the most obvious textbook, beautiful hail damage you've ever seen. Nope, 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 nope. They just won't pay for it. I mean, the siding's falling off. Well, you know, I mean, I guess we could pay for that. I'm like, right. Two, you go to the next house and then in a few neighborhoods over, no damage, right? Um, we got called out to go to this house and meet with the contractor because the the homeowner knew the owner of the, the, the roofing company. And they're like, Matt, go out there and meet with that guy. Okay, great. Get out there. The guy didn't even get on the roof, totals the roof. And I'm like, what? I, it's, it's so that as as a roofer, you're getting a wide variety of you know same deal. It's the exact same deal. So you kind of have to like think about it that way. Um, a lot of adjusters don't know hail damage. A lot of contractors don't know hail damage. But again, when you get into when you start dealing with companies that are they've got experienced uh, roof salespeople or roof you know experienced contractors and a lot of those big storm chaser companies those guys are pretty experienced um, in a lot of cases if they're not brand if it's not a brand new person who's training or whatever um if they a lot of the times the the guys that are that are giving you the most trouble are the ones who are struggling to get any roofs sold right because they they don't get pages for showing up like you do um, so they may be going to all these fringe neighborhoods because the place where all the, the great hail fell and, and smashed up all these roofs and did all these wonderful ten, millions of dollars in damage in these areas, right? They're shut out because, you know, A&R roofing is their street, their, their yard signs are on every single front yard all over the place. They, they, they got out there the day the storm hit, the storm hits at 10 o'clock in the morning, those guys are out there at one o'clock in the afternoon canvassing those neighborhoods. They, they, they look at the hail map and all that stuff. They're out there, they get those roofs, right? Joe Bob, you know, he hemmed and hawed, waited a little bit, maybe just went to the bar with his buddies and, eh, I don't know, I mean, do we want to do hail work? I don't know. And then his wife calls, hey, we got to go to the, our, my mom's for the weekend. A week passes, right? And the, if that happens, you got to get in like immediately, otherwise you're going to be shut out of the whole thing. Those guys, they're going to give you the most trouble because they're they're fighting over scraps, and they're going to they're going to be the ones that argue with you on stupid stuff, right? When you go into the 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 well hit areas, I mean, you you usually you're not meeting with a guy because they're like, this is if the, if the adjuster doesn't see this, we'll come out and meet him again and be pointed out. But I mean, you have to be blind not to see this hail damage, right? So usually. Those roofs all get totaled unless it's, you know, some knucklehead adjuster that just doesn't know what they're looking at. In fairness, I, I, I would keep that in mind. Not a lot of people really get it. They don't have a lot of experience with it. A lot of people dip their toe in and then dip it out again. You know, they might do roof sales for a summer or they might be an adjuster for a summer and they're like, that sucked. And they're not ever going to do it again. Right. So they don't, there's a lot of turnover with, with, on both sides of the fence. Um, so you're going to get, you're getting a lot of new people and a lot of the experienced people 
you know, they, they age out or they retire or they go off and do something else after a few years. And so you've got all these fresh people with no experience, mm -hmm. right? But it doesn't take that long to get experience. I would say by the end of your third storm, hailstorm for sure, um, you should have a pretty good handle on it. So becoming a highly paid independent property claims adjuster can be done quickly, but I'm not gonna lie to you, it's not necessarily easy to do. Learn how to get your career started off the best way with no dead ends and no wasted money and no wasted time in the next video.